Hey guys, it's John again and I'm stuck in traffic. I had to run up to the dealer uh, to get something checked out for a recall. And uh, since I'm stuck in traffic, I thought I'd talk about slowing down, specifically engine braking. Um, I got this question a lot, and I did a, a video on shifting, I talked about it a little bit. I got that question a lot though about engine braking, and should you engine brake, and I've actually seen it on forums too, people debating whether or not engine braking is a good idea. If you don't know what engine braking is, essentially the idea is you're downshifting like I am here, we let the clutch out, and we let the engine kind of slow us down a little bit. I can downshift all the way down to first, give it some throttle, right? So the idea is that we help use the engine to help us slow down. The engine drives the rear wheel. When you, when you downshift and let off the clutch, I always give it a little bit of throttle first to kind of match the revs a bit and let off the throttle. Then the engine, um, when you don't, we're not adding any throttle, the engine just kind of adds a lot of drag to that rear wheel and it's sort of like applying mild rear brake pressure. Uh, so the debate kind of is whether or not it's a good idea. Um, my answer to this one is real quick, uh, just like I did in, all right, take the whole lane, uh, just like I did in, in uh, the comments section when people asked about it. Uh, and that's, that's not a bad idea. There's nothing at all wrong with it. I mean, I guess technically you might add a little bit of clutch wear, but I don't think you'll add that much, if any, because engine braking is, is a lot less force on the clutch and the transmission and the engine than accelerating is, which also goes on beyond there. People say, well, I don't engine brake because it wears out the transmission. I mean, it's a lot less uh, stress and pressure on the engine and on the transmission and everything else than just accelerating hard is. So uh, I, I don't buy that one. Um, however, I do buy that it's, 1,000% unnecessary. You're not really saving your brakes that much. Brakes are cheap and brakes are easy to replace. I'm not sure why everyone is so afraid of, of changing brake pads. So many techniques about preserving brake pads, you know, alternating so they don't get too hot and alternating between your two brakes so they don't get too too hot and wear out faster and, and engine braking and, and all these other things to prevent wearing out brake pads. I'm not sure why there's so much fear. Maybe, maybe folks have never done it or they're being charged an arm and a leg by a dealership to do it. Um, it's, it's not a difficult job at all. It just takes a few basic hand tools. If you've got a socket set, a, uh, some sort of a clamp, and a pair of pliers, then you can change your brakes. And it's not complicated. I would also, uh, while you're at it, f go ahead and flush your brake fluid, which can be done with a box wrench uh, and some silicone tubing at the very least. Or for 30 to 50 bucks on Amazon, you can buy yourself a vacuum pump and uh, make the uh, job even easier. So it's not a complicated job, and pads aren't very expensive. So I'm not one to be so worried about wearing out my brake pads. I check them often, and I use them as they're intended to be used. I would much rather have the linear control of brakes and how well I can uh, control the bike at low speeds and at a stop uh, than the engine. And uh, so for me personally, I don't do a lot of engine braking. Another thing I hear often is, well, I want to use all the braking I can and that assumes that the engine is like some sort of third wheel. My back, if I didn't have ABS, my back brake would be easily capable of locking up my rear tire. Easily capable. I don't know any bike that isn't because of the simple physics that as your bike uh, decelerates, the weight of the bike uh, kind of rolls forward on the front axle and comes off of the rear wheel. So uh, because of that, it doesn't take much force at all to lock up the rear brake. So, again, because of that, um, I just don't think that you're actually adding anything. In fact, I know you're not. Your rear brake can do everything engine braking can do with, with more linear uh, and more uh, distinct control over engine braking. And engine braking while using the rear brake doesn't brake you any more than just using more rear brake. So engine braking doesn't add more braking. The reason why um, you'll see engine braking used in racing, for example, is not to improve slowing down. It's to keep their engine in the power band at all times. They're not really engine braking. They're just keeping the engine RPMs up. Now that said, that said, staying in the correct gear at all times is essential. And one of the best ways to do that is engine braking. Even if you're not doing it to actually slow down, uh, downshifting through the gears is the best way to know that you're always in the correct gear. Now when you get a few thousand miles on a bike and you have experience with it, uh, you'll begin to know at what speeds or what it feels like uh, to downshift correctly. And you can hold the clutch in and downshift if that's your style. I don't think there's any advantage or disadvantage to one or the other. Again, I don't think engine braking is necessary and I don't think it slows you down faster. I, I, I'm positive it doesn't slow you down faster uh, like some folks think. But, like I said, it doesn't hurt anything and it helps you keep, stay in the right gear. So for that reason, I do suggest it to a lot of, a lot of riders. Excuse me there.
Now, for me, you have to watch through my videos. What you probably see, if you really paid attention to my riding when I'm chatting with you guys, is you probably see a mix, right? I'm, uh, I'm quite confident you do. You probably see some engine braking, and quite frequently when I'm just coming to a stop at a stoplight, what you probably more frequently see from me, that you'll see here in just a minute, is you'll see me start to apply the brakes, pull the clutch in, and start downshifting. You notice I'm not going past third now because I know from my own experience with this bike that that's the correct gear. Now I'm in second gear. And then I let off the clutch, add a little bit of throttle, and I take off. I'm in the correct gear. And that just comes with experience, and every bike is different. In my own personal practice, I never ever downshift into first gear unless I have the clutch out. Just because first gear is so low on most bikes that it, you know, is kind of quite a bit of a jump up in RPMs. Uh, rev matching, though, uh, is one way that can be helpful, and, and rev matching is what I do when I engine brake. And what I'll do uh, is kind of do it a little bit here. And rev matching, basically, I'm going to go down to third gear, so I'll pull the clutch and I'll add a little bit of throttle, downshift, and, and then let out the clutch. And that prevents that kind of very harsh kind of, you know, shove forward uh, that, that will happen and can happen. Oh, great, a school bus. Cool, I didn't want to get home today. Anyway, they can happen um, when you're engine braking hard. So, guys, I am not going to put you through the horrors of sitting in school bus traffic. Uh, I, I love you all way too much for that. And I am not going to be like many motor vloggers who decide to sit in traffic uh, and talk to you like that's what you want to see. So I will talk to you guys later. I just wanted to throw those couple of thoughts out there because I was bored. Just a couple of thoughts about engine braking and whether or not it's necessary. I am curious to hear your comments below, kind of what you do, what, what is your practice, and if you have any questions. So uh, hopefully I threw that in there. I did have some, a question about downshifting. Um, and I mean, it really isn't something that, that takes a whole video. I mean, that's just it. You know, give it a little bit of throttle to smooth things out, lower the gear, and start letting out a clutch like you would when you're taking off. Um, it's not really a blip of throttle. If you have a tack, use that. Otherwise, just give it enough to hold it. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. God bless.